Northern Ireland is arguably one of the most beautiful places to road trip. From forests to mountains to coastline that looks like it belongs in the Mediterranean, there's a little bit of everything. And today we're gonna take you to some of the most unique places on a Northern Ireland road trip. And plus, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you might recognize some places. It's for you Game of Thrones fans. We are in the Dark Hedges, also known as the road in and out of King's Landing, which actually used to literally just be a road for nothing, just for the neighborhood. And now there's hundreds of people lining this road. <laughs> we were here back in 2018, and someone since has really, really capitalized off of this road and trees, because now there's a restaurant, a hotel, a parking lot. So someone's doing pretty well for themselves. Just a short scenic drive away, you have our next Game of Thrones filming location, which I'm absolutely going to pronounce wrong, Cushendun Caves. Cushendun Caves. <laughs> and I have to say, even if you're not a Game of Thrones fan, you can't get over this beauty. I mean, wow. This is the spot where that really super creepy scene happened where the Red Witch gives birth to the shadow creature. It's pretty eerie in here. Thanks. <laughs> Game of Thrones Hotel. This is probably one of the most beautiful coastal routes we've ever driven. It is breathtaking. Every hill we come over, we're like, oh. Also probably one of the most challenging to drive because it looks like it's a bicycle path instead of an actual road. So if you do take this route, definitely take your time going through it. I don't know how Andrew is doing this. There are some points on this road that I'm like, holding my breath. Oh, oh my god. <gasps> we are now reversing down said terrifying road. Is it bad? Oh man. Now's the time that I regret not getting insurance on the car. It's... I don't think it's scratched, right? No. Ooh, looks good. All right. <laughs> what is the Venice? <laughs> Took that a little bit fast. Also, if they offer you an upgrade at a you know really nice price uh, at the rental car place, just say no unless it's winter because they're doing that because the SUV can't fit on any roads here. <laughs> that this one was one of the most overlooked filming spots and it's probably because it's the hardest one to get to. <laughs> the most narrow roads. No vehicles beyond this point. I'd probably recommend parking at the first lot. If you do come here, there's one lot before this spot. You'll see it. I'd probably recommend parking there and just walking. It's a super clear day today, and that, that is Scotland. <laughs> so this is used as Slaver's Bay, where Tyrion and Jorah got captured on their journey. <laughs> it's kind of a smaller filming spot, but it's definitely beautiful.
We're gonna take a quick break from Game of Thrones locations and actually go and visit one of the most iconic places in Northern Ireland. Before we head out, we found out there's another filming location right across the way from Merlot Bay, which probably makes this drive worth it. It also said you need sturdy hiking boots. Let's see how it goes. What happened? RIP white shoes. <laughs> I sunk in. I'm trying to follow the path. <laughs> I found a little rock that I am not moving from. We're not going to go any further because it's just pools of mud, pools of mud, and now I have to go find a shoe store. But there's an iconic scene here where Jon Snow meets Daenerys' dragon up close and personal. It's wonderful. This is Fairhead's Cliff, Northern Ireland's tallest cliff face and this is as close as I will be seeing it. We are now walking to the Carrick Reed Bridge. We came here last time back in 2018 and the line was ridiculously long so we decided to stop by today and it's a lot shorter. We were a little bit worried about the wind today, so we asked the woman at the ticket sales. She said they only were open three days last week because of wind, but today the wind is really bad on land, but not on the bridge and the island, which is a relief for me because we know how I feel about suspension bridges. It moves a lot. <laughs> The Karakuri Bridge actually wasn't originally built for tourists. It was built by fishermen so they could cross the bridge, go over to the island, and check on their salmon nets. All right, we have crossed the bridge over to the island, cross back to the mainland, and we just read that the bridge is actually suspended over an extinct volcano mouth. So that's pretty cool too. We are about to set foot where legendary giants once walked. You can't go to Northern Ireland without seeing Giant's Causeway. that this wasn't man-made. I mean, just like the basalt columns just look so perfectly aligned. It's just wild that this is nature. And you know, just a mountain overlooking it all is just, I mean, something that you just have to come and see for yourself. We're gonna try and catch one more stop before the sun sets and then hopefully find some soup for my soul and a Guinness. Bad. The wind whew, hurts my 
face. The coffee came with our parking spot. <laughs> if you park at the Causeway Hotel, it's kind of a little bit of a hack, I think. If you park at the Causeway Hotel, it's only $10, which is cheaper than the visitor center, and you get two free coffees and cookies. What a deal. We decided to stop and check into our Airbnb because it was on the way to our next stop. Anyways, the view. Since the sun is setting, we decided we're gonna prioritize food, go grab some food, call it a night, and take you to our last two locations tomorrow morning. So, I'm gonna enjoy the sunset. Good night, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. <laughs> We are well rested. We stayed the night in Port Stewart last night, which was a beautiful seaside town. I highly recommend and our Airbnb was so cute. We'll put the link in the description below here. And we've gotten ourselves a coffee from the jam jar and a scone. And I have an official love affair with Irish butter. I don't know why Irish butter is so delicious, but I'm kind of obsessed. Another day, another accidental one mile walk. <laughs> we came up to another sign that said, no parking, residents only. So it's a one mile walk to our next stop. That makes me even more glad that we decided to stop and call it a night. I'm super excited for this location and the weather is prime for it. I think you're gonna be really surprised at this one. Not again. Ugh. Well, I'm glad I didn't buy new shoes. Your foot's underwater. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> you just gotta keep going, you're halfway there. I'm just gonna finish my stone. My shoe is filled with water. But maybe I cleaned some of the mud off. This door is locked. Oh, I did all of that. I'm not going that way. <laughs> I don't think we're in the right spot. I live here now. Stay up to the right. I know, but this side is thorns. I saw that. I feel like I'm in some kind of nature movie. <laughs> I feel like I had a better analogy for that, but like... <laughs> like, it feels like the Princess Bride. <laughs> oh God! Sword on my leg. Ah, I'm in the water again. Okay. 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 God, my foot is so wet. <laughs> Turns out we were in the total wrong location. So if you put Port Stewart Strand into your Google Maps, doesn't <laughs> doesn't take you there. Turns out Port Stewart Strand is in Port Stewart where we stayed last night. Imagine that. If you are driving like us, instead of putting Port Stewart Strand in your GPS, you can put Harry's Shack in your GPS and it will take you right to the parking lot. It's hard to believe that this is Northern Ireland because in the Game of Thrones, this is actually depicted as the coastline of Dorne, which looks really, really Mediterranean in the show. But as you can see, we are in Northern Ireland. Oberyn Martell is from Dorne, and he has one of my favorite lines that says, it's a big and beautiful world. Most of us live and die where we were born and never get to see any of it. I don't want to be most of us. I think Oberyn has the worst death in all of Game of Thrones. Arguably one of the worst, I think the worst. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So our next stop is right there. Unfortunately, there's a river in between us, so we can't walk to it. Let's see if we can just... <sighs> Made it! <laughs> Welcome to Dragonstone. Not to be confused with where they're filming House of the Dragon right now. That's a different Dragonstone. This is where Stannis Baratheon actually pledged himself to the Lord of the Light. This is really just an epic location, even outside of Game of Thrones. It's probably one of my favorite filming locations that we've been to so far. So this is Mussenden Temple, and it was built back in 1785 as an estate library. 
and it was actually modeled after Rome's temple of Vesta. So pretty cool looking. And that's a wrap on our Northern Ireland road trip slash Game of Thrones tour. <laughs> Pretty much if you drive anywhere along the northern coast, you're going to see some amazing viewpoints and amazing filming locations. So highly recommend driving a car and checking them out for yourself. And now we are off to Londonderry for yet another world's biggest festival. See you on the next video. <sighs> I literally just swallowed a bug. I'm really upset about it. Never had that happen before.